You have gotten under the cover here into the very key question. Should the United States government be restricting free political speech? That's what you're arguing, isn't it? Should that absolutely be? is right on point. Should the government be able to ban political speech? We could not advertise our movie. We put it in theaters, but they want to say, you can't let anyone know it's there. You cannot advertise at all. You can't advertise on the radio. You can't advertise on television. So they wanted to ban all speech, and that is dangerous, and I think that's where they overstepped. You know, people don't understand that the Citizens United decision in January of 2010 began in 2004. I remember talking to David a lot about the fact that both the media, the general media, and the way laws were structured were being enforced unfairly in favor of the left as opposed to anybody on the other side of the political spectrum. Liberals always have an advantage because what the liberals have is the, are the media corporations. And the media corporations have become, as we've seen, more and more brazen. And they are all exempt. All media corporations are exempt. I think for a lot of people this was a wake-up call for the fact that this um, is a First Amendment issue. When people spend money on a political cause in order to promote a particular idea, in order to even back a particular candidate, they have a First Amendment interest in doing that thing. But you know, there used to be a time when, when free speech was really a bipartisan commitment, where Republicans and Democrats both defended the First Amendment. Uh, unfortunately, in today's highly politicized time, that, that, that's no longer the case. For me, watching Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 9-11 and the success of that film crystallized in my mind the importance of using the battle over culture and over what our society was going to be about and using long format film, I saw that as an opportunity for the conservative movement because we had never been involved in that before. Then in the 2004 elections, Michael Moore produced a film called Fahrenheit 9-11. And to promote that film, he produced a series of television ads which were really probably the most effective political ads of that campaign season. To stop these terrorist killers. Thank you. Now watch this drive. They were very effective as political ads, but they were exempt from the McCain-Feingold restrictions because Michael Moore was a film producer. We recognized immediately that there were two sets of rules, one for Hollywood and one for conservatives, one for everyone else. I have great respect for David, the way he thought this out and planned it. I need to be treated equally, and, and the only way I'm going to make that happen is to produce productions of various sorts that can be into the marketplace of ideas, and if people try to stop me, then I'll have an opportunity to test the Constitution and the laws. David knew that he had to pushed the envelope a little bit here. So we embarked on a multi-year, multi-million dollar endeavor to create Citizens United Productions, to create conservative content, starting in 2004 with our rebuttal film, Celsius, but then moving down the road with many other films. We spent the next three to four years becoming a filmmaking company. Citizens United produced over that period of time probably seven or eight documentary films. And we've expected to go back to the FEC and say, okay, we now have Hillary the movie. We are established filmmakers. We've produced X number of films over the past four or five years. Um, you should recognize us just like Michael Moore's exempt. We decided to take the fight to them because they were threatening us. They were threatening me. Um, and they threatened me with, in essence, five years in prison and tens of thousands of dollars in fines for every violation of federal election law if we went through with what we were wanting to do, which was simply make a film and advertise a film exists. And, and they would not allow us to do it. 
what could be more close to the heart of the First Amendment than um, an explanation of a point of view as to whether someone who was running for president was qualified for that job. The case started out as about video on demand. You know, the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act was focused on radio and television advertisements. Uh, Citizens United made feature-length movies. So there was a strong argument that this was a, a type of speech, Hillary the movie, that Congress had never contemplated banning. It just illustrates the fundamental problem that we had to solve, which was that the government was in control of who got to speak in political campaigns. So in March 2009, we had our oral argument before the United States Supreme Court, and Ted Olson went in there and, in my opinion, just killed it. Uh, he did an incredible job before the court. He made the argument that the federal statute that threatened David Bossie with prison and massive fines for producing a, a discussion of a candidate's qualification for office was at the very heart of the First Amendment and would apply to books, magazines, other forms of communications. And the justices picked up on that and asked the Deputy Solicitor General, is it true um, that your argument that you're making on behalf of the United States would apply to books? I think the moment the tide turned was when the Deputy Solicitor General of the United States acknowledged that under the United States government's interpretation of the Constitution, the government had the power to ban books. So they were openly claiming the power to ban books, saying, no, I'm sorry, that book is not approved by the Ministry of Justice, the George Orwell Ministry of Justice, that determines what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say. When, the, when they heard then, the justices heard that, you could almost feel an audible gasp in the courtroom. It seemed obvious to us, but I don't think the justices had focused on that point. And you could tell that they were surprised and somewhat stunned that the government of the United States was saying that they could put a book publisher in jail for talking about a candidate for the President of the United States. Fast forward to the end of June, everyone knows all the Supreme Court cases get decided by the time they leave session at the end of June. We were all there in court. It was the last day of the court session. We were expecting a decision. We thought Citizens United was going to be decided at that point. And we were stunned when the Sup Chief Justice of the Supreme Court said, no, there's no decision in that case. We're going to schedule it for re-argument in September. We knew at that point that we had an opportunity to make the central constitutional question. Does the First Amendment really mean what we thought it meant? It went from a big case to a monumental case overnight. And Ted Olson, once again, delivered uh, an incredible performance before the United States Supreme Court. And in that particular case, it was argued by the United States Solicitor General, Elena Kagan, who is now Justice Kagan. So Ted Olson was up against the Solicitor General. Uh, and in my opinion, we won the day uh, again, because one of the questions was back to book banning. And Elena Kagan tried to walk back Malcolm Stewart's answer, but to no avail. The United States Supreme Court found 5-4 in January uh, of 2010 in our favor. It's a monumental victory for Citizens United, and more importantly for the First Amendment, and the fundamental rights of people to participate in the political process in the marketplace of ideas. Well, today in one of the most radical Supreme Court actions in years, Justice Roberts and Alito and their five-member conservative majority overthrew at least a decade of settled law and congressional action and multiple Supreme Court precedents to wipe those laws away. I still remember when the Citizens United ruling was announced. I wondered at the time how people would react to it. Uh, I, I knew that there would some be some who would hate it and who would wrap themselves in the flag while condemning the First Amendment, which is exactly what has happened. A few days after that, my former boss, Justice Alito, uh, was at the State of the Union, and I, I, I watched him as he was watching President Obama disparage that opinion. With all due deference to separation of powers, last week the Supreme Court reversed a century of law that I believe will open the floodgates for special interests, including foreign corporations.
to spend without limit in our elections. Uh, and he made some statements about the decision, including the influence of foreign money. And, the, and foreign money had not been a part of the Citizens United decision. And you could see the justices very uncomfortable because they couldn't object to what the president was saying. I was surprised in the, in the way in which it was so um, actively mischaracterized. And it has nothing to do with foreign corporations. What it allows is for persons to bind themselves together under a under a, the flag of a nonprofit corporation and to speak. It's, you know, it's nothing more sinister than that. We're shocked. This was an inappropriate way for the president to address a Supreme Court decision, and it was particularly inappropriate to have his facts wrong when he was talking about the case. Citizens United took power away from the establishment, took power away from the established candidates and gave it back to the people. It's exactly one of the reasons that an outsider, somebody who was not of Washington, somebody who was an anti-establishment figure, like Donald Trump, to assist him in rising up with his campaign. The last several years during the Trump administration, we've seen that the left has a burning desire to control all speech. The left, if you disagree with them, they punch you in the head. They close down conservative speakers on college campuses. They will do whatever it takes to make sure that if you do not agree with them, you will not be heard. They will silence you. You look at college campuses where, where hard left academics and administrators are trying to silence speech they disagree with. It's a sad statement, and, and, and it is only the left. I'm not urging you to pull socialists down. I'm not urging you to pull Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. Why? Because we can engage on the substance, we can engage on the merits, we can engage on the ideas, but without the ability to have free speech, you can't engage on any of that. And make it absolutely a priority to finally, whether it's through Supreme Court appointments or constitutional amendment, to get rid of Citizens United. The nominees that I will bring forth to the Supreme Court will have to be loud and clear. They will vote to overturn Citizens United. Many of the people who are advocating that maybe don't fully understand what they're saying. There was a, literally, they have proposed an amendment to the First Amendment. It was an amendment to the Constitution to basically change the definitions of what constitutes free speech in America. They are willing to go in and change the founders' vision of a constitutional protection for the free speech rights of every American. Because they only want speech that they agree with, and that's the danger. That's the power of the First Amendment. It's what guarantees the American people their freedom of speech, but their every other freedom that they enjoy. We haven't amended the Bill of Rights in 200 years, and now is no time to start. The Citizens United decision is mischaracterized by President Obama. He sort of started it, but the mainstream media was in on it too. The New York Times excoriated the decision, again incorrectly. They talked about how unfair and unjust it was for a corporation to have constitutional rights. The New York Times said that it's bad for corporations to have constitutional rights. The New York Times is a corporation. Uh, and it has benefited over the years by many Supreme Court presidents, precedents upholding their constitutional First Amendment rights. The Citizens United opinion helped establish the contours of the First Amendment, making clear that the government can't step in and tell you that you can't engage in certain political speech. That these things really do have First Amendment ramifications. That's an important precedent, and one that is affected our political system and our legal system in a very positive way. One cannot repeal Citizens United without substantially cutting into and eroding the First Amendment. It, it just doesn't happen. Your, your freedom of association, freedom of speech, and freedom of press would all be implicated by something like that. Political speech is the core of the First Amendment. We've got to preserve and protect it. I think Citizens United is an opinion that is built to last. The Supreme Court has shown that it will be a bulwark that defends 
the freedom of speech. The impact, I think, for the country is that it ensures that the government does not have a stranglehold over political speech. We also have to remember that the Citizens United case was all about a movie. It was about censorship. It was about an attempt by the federal government to regulate what someone could say in a documentary film. That's a really big problem. When we think about countries where governments have gone all wrong and where things have ended badly, they get there in a lot of different ways through a lot of different paths. But almost all of them have this theme in common. At some point, somebody in the government takes control of what people can say. That ought to be disturbing to all of us, and that's cause to celebrate the Citizens United decision by the Supreme Court in 2010. Citizens United was about the right of individual citizens to speak. Look, anyone who believes in liberty, you don't want government power in charge of your speech. And, and, and those fundamental questions, they're, they're every bit as important today as, as, as they were the day our country was founded. There's a reason the First Amendment uh, is, is the very first protection in our Bill of Rights. Because free speech, the ability to disagree, the ability to express your views, it, it's fundamental to democracy. A democratic republic doesn't work if you can't speak, if you don't have the right to express your views. The legacy of the Citizens United case is so important to remind the American people that they have that First Amendment right. They have their freedom of speech. And without that, there are no others.